I'm adding these super affordable lithium iron phosphate batteries to my off-grid RV. My family and I love to go camping in this RV because we can go anywhere with all the power that we need and we're expanding that from 7 kilowatt hours to nearly 16 kilowatt hours. And these batteries are insanely affordable at only $330 each for 4 kilowatt hours. That's crazy cheap. Nothing's this cheap. And now they have a mini version, which technically has a little bit more power and is $10 less per battery. This is what I wish I had gotten, but these at $329.99 each with the total capacity come out to only 8.3 cents per watt hour. Even Will Prowse did a video on these recently and was really impressed by them. And if you want to see a really detailed breakdown of all the stuff that he found, I highly recommend you go check out his video. But he was very impressed with the build quality of this battery for how cheap it was. I've been using this BigBattery.com 48 volt 7 kilowatt hour battery pack for quite a while and it's worked well. I can only find it on BatteryEvo.com right now for $1,299. And when we compare the pricing, this comes out to 18.6 cents Per watt hour more than double the cost and is 150 pounds we've traveled all over an rv because of how reliable the power is and we've begun renting it out for people who want to use it for short-term camping trips as well as long-term work trips so this upgrade is in preparation for someone who's going to be renting this rv from us long term for a work trip out of the area it has a mini split in it instead of using the rooftop air conditioner and we've done all sorts of upgrades on the inside that i got from recpro.com in order to make it much more homey and more comfortable that way multiple people can be in here very comfortably my batteries were manufactured in march of 2025 and i think that's why there's a difference now between the mini and these full-size ones but either way they come with a five-year warranty there's no Bluetooth, there's no heating, there's nothing special about these. It's a simple, basic battery that allows you to build affordably and easily without having to worry about communication and all sorts of issues like that using 3 8 inch posts to work with the most common connectors out there. I have a GrowWatt 3000 watt inverter that I've used to run this RV, but unfortunately with the eight 400 watt solar panels I have on the roof, I can only connect seven of them due to the voltage limitation of this inverter. All of these cables are scattered underneath the bed and so I want to move this underneath the couch and that's because we hardly use the space under the couch as well as people who rent this from us never use the space under the couch but they do use the space under the bed so I want to open all of that up. This GrowWatt inverter barely fits in the same compartment as the heater and now that I've got that off we're going to get this huge battery out so that way it's not weighing down the front of the RV more. I use this really thick padding that came with the batteries in order to ensure that as we went down any bumpy roads, the batteries had extra protection in them. I was lucky enough that these barely fit in the space underneath my couch. And that's why I still think the mini batteries would be a far better option because you would still have more space, even more space to fit an inverter in this same compartment. I was originally gonna put them all shoulder to shoulder, but realized then I'd have to get longer battery cables. So instead I changed their orientation to where all the posts ran down the middle. I've got to pull all these cables back into this furnace compartment so that way it's nice and clean underneath the bed. And I'm making my own battery cables because I have a bunch of excess 2 aught cable on hand. You really could get away with either 2 gauge or 1 gauge cable because the demands off this battery are not very high. Charging with a maximum of 3200 watts and outputting a maximum of 3000 watts, 2 aught cable is way overkill. I'm only using it because it's extra. And I bought these copper 3 8 terminals directly from Amazon and I'm using the short cables to go from battery to battery and the long cables to go from the batteries to the inverter. It's important that when you make cables or buy cables even that the heat shrink is not underneath the copper flat part because that will reduce the amount of amps that can pass through the terminals and that can lead to heat buildup and even fire. It's very important to get the proper cables. It's probably best to just buy cables I like getting them from windynation.com. So here I've wired them in series in order to get 48 volts. And I'm pairing this with a 500 amp battery monitor from Renogy so I can see the exact state of charge more accurately rather than just using the voltage, which is not a very accurate way to see the true state of charge. There are lots of videos on how to put this together and the wiring diagram is very easy. So I'm not gonna go into the full details on this video, but this was very easy to put together. I'm gonna have the main negative battery cable have the shunt on it, which is that big brass looking block. And then the main positive cable also gets a positive lead in order to power the screen up. Generally speaking, the maximum voltage is going to be about 54.4 volts and the low voltage is going to be about 44.8 volts. 
I set the total amp hours to 310 because this is a series connection where volts go up and amps stay the same. Everything is connected to the inverter and I want to turn it on to make sure it's all working. Just like that, no problem at all, working just fine. I'm already running power to the whole RV and I'm beginning to solar charge with the seven panels that are connected up. I store the excess shore power cable underneath the oven because there's a lot of dead space in the RV in this area. So I pull it all back, make it nice and tidy and put it under there. So that way I don't have excess cables laying around and getting in the way where people are actually gonna be using storage. All of the cables are nice and tidy. There's airflow inside of this compartment. I'm not worried about the inverter overheating and I'm already getting 1.2 kilowatts of charge going into the battery. That's a total of about 27 to 28 amps and it's varying due to the cloud conditions. But as I'm looking at this, I'm considering I can only use seven solar panels, but I have an idea. I have another inverter that would allow me to use all eight of my solar panels, and that's using the EG4 3000 EHV off-grid inverter. The current grow watt inverter is great. It's a 3000 watt output. It works with 48 volt batteries and it's only $670, but it only lets in 250 volts from the solar panels, where the EG4 one will do up to 5000 watts and 500 volts, basically double the amount of solar. And it's only $20 more and it's more compact. So I stole this inverter from my server rack setup. This means I have to make some last minute alterations because I can't fit the two aught cable into this inverter. So I have to undo the cables from my shunt and as well from the batteries and do a little bit of rewiring, but it only takes a matter of five or 10 minutes and I'm back up and running without any problems. I've double checked the gauge. This is more than enough of handling all of the power that's gonna be going in and out of these cables without having any overheating issues. I've taken that into serious consideration to make sure that these batteries do not get hot. The solar conditions are pretty good, but it's still a little cloudy out and I'm already getting 1.9 kilowatts of solar input. I'm very confident this is gonna work extremely well for the long-term renter. They've already had it for a long time and reported zero issues with this entire system. And it's getting 2.4 kilowatts of solar input right now, which is 75% of the rated output, which is great for panels laying perfectly flat on a roof. This is the site where it's being parked and it was a four hour drive where about 30 minutes of it was down a dirt road, very bumpy, and the batteries have had no problems at all running everything. We are gonna have to cut back these trees and the property owner said that's perfectly fine. Humpsync has really affordable, great batteries, and I highly recommend them. They've made it easy and affordable for me to boondock in my RV.